Hello and welcome back to another video here at Boreali. It's good to be back. Today I'm just going to walk you through how to use Jasmonite AC730. We have a lot of our customers asking us how to use the material, what's the best applications. On the other side, we have been working with it for the last two, three months and it's super exciting. It has really got me excited with the possibilities of what can be made, how quickly things can be done and how actually how strong and durable they are when made with AC730. So Jasmonite AC730 comes in, you can say preset colors. So you have your brick, you have old terracotta, you have sandstone, natural stone. Natural stone is one of my favorites. I, I think that color looks really nice. And then we have, I think our favorite charcoal as well, white marble, which is, I mean, you can just see how white it is. It's, it, it just looks so pure. That can, I mean, that's your best bet to tint as well. It can be tinted to any color that you want. You have your silver granite, which is, I think, the best seller because of, I think, the aggregates inside it. We have Portland as well. We've tried out some projects. We've tried out this small planter. I mean, I say it's small, but these are generally the planters we are casting in the silicon molds. So it's quite cool, I think. And we have with us here a very strong stool as well. You can actually sit on it. It's hollow from inside, but you can see how solid it is. So I'll get to it while casting one of my favorite reasons to use 730. We're going to start by making this small, I'm thinking we'll use white marble and we will cast white marble in this and we will tint it with a green color. I like a pastel shade. When the stone finish is done on the project, pastel green color looks quite cool. So I just have my bag of white marble. 500 gram pack. We don't need a lot of material for this. I think I'm going to mix like 400 grams of powder and 80 grams of liquid. So unlike the AC100, the AC730 is mixed in a 5 is to 1 ratio. So you're putting essentially half the liquid that you would put in AC100. So that does mean that it will not be as liquidy as AC100, but but I'll show you how it all works out in the end. So you always put the liquid first. I'm going to put about 80 grams of liquid. So before you mix, just a fair uh, warning that you have about 15 to 20 minutes of pot life. This is when the material is nice and runny. After about 10 to 20 minutes, you will see that the material starts to thicken. For usage in such a mold, you'd want it to be runny, you'd want it to be liquidy. So now I'll put 400 grams of powder. So I've got my required powder and liquid as per ratio. I'll just go ahead and mix it now. Always use the sure blade mixer. It's, you can mix with a spatula, you can mix with a candy stick, but this just makes sure you don't, don't have a lump. So as you mix this, you will realize that in the beginning it will be a little lumpy and then as you mix it more and more, it gets fluid like this. 
Now, if you're working in a silicon mold like this, you need it to be slightly more liquid. So for that, you can add maybe a spoon, a teaspoon at a time of liquid extra. So I would just add it like this. Add a little bit, mix it, check if it is to your required consistency. Just want it slightly smoother if you are going to use this in such a silicone mold. If you are using the technique that we are going to use next where we are just going to brush the material on. I wouldn't say that you would require it. So I've added a bit of green pigment. So I've mixed my material. I've got it to a good consistency. Now all we need to do is pour. Loving the color. Can't wait to see it after stone finish. You can see it's easily spreading in the mold. I'll just use my silicone mold to push the material down. While you mix the material with the spatula, you just feel that it's a bit granular. It's, it, it feels like sugar almost. And it's just that there are additives in this. So AC730 is a cementitious base material. And there are additives in it that make it much, much, much stronger. So that means you can make solid things like this tool. You can make panels, big panels like 4 by 4 size or even bigger than that, which are really, really durable. So I'm just going to tap this, you always tap so that the material reaches everywhere to avoid air bubbles. Also it's super satisfying to just watch while tapping. So that's it, our casting is done. You could see how simple it was to cast, you also have a longer pot life in this as compared to the AC 100. The cure time on this is about four hours. So you will see maybe because of our weather conditions, it might even cure after two and a half, three hours, but it's a safe bet if you're trying it out for the first time to demold after four hours, you will see how solid it becomes. I'm just gonna set this aside now and move on to our next casting. That's going to be this square rectangle that we have made. We make sort of these wall panels out of this. It's just an experiment this style, this mold. I'm going to use the natural stone color, which is this, one of my favorites. We're going to use this color. And once the project's done and once we do the stone finish, you guys will see how cool this color is and why I like it so much. I'm not going to go to the entire thickness of this mold for AC730. Panels of about 8 mm to 12 mm to 15 mm are really strong. Like you can see this entire thing is hollow and the wall thickness is about, this is not even 4 to 5 mm. 4 to 5 mm is a bit weak for this, but 8 mm to 10, 12 mm would be great. So I'm going to mix about 1 kilo of jasmineite and we're going to apply this by using a paintbrush. I have the paintbrush right here. I'll show you all how easy that is. We'll go in a 5 is to 1 ratio. I'm just thinking I'll split it in two parts. So I'm going to make, so I'll put 100 grams of liquid first.
I'm just double checking my mix that if there's any powder left, you'll see the high shear blade does a superb job at mixing this. Now what you're looking to do is just spread some of the material around. And all we're going to do is hit it with the brush now. So you want to be getting a thin layer. What you're looking to do is get an even coat throughout the entire project and make sure that the silicone mold is properly covered at all places. Just looking out for any patches left where there's no material. And now I can also tap it a bit. I can now see that I have a lot of spots where there isn't material because of the shape of the mold where these bumps go up and down. I'm going to make I think another kilo of material really quickly. So I'm happy with the casting now. I think we've put enough material in it. It might be thin in some places, but that's because of the way the silicone mold is made and because of the uneven finish on top. But I think it should be good. We've put about one and a half kilo of material in this casting. You can use the brushing technique that I showed you to make things like this for projects, bigger projects like this. It can even be as big as I, I, I think 10 feet whatever i mean it just has to be designed correctly but the important thing is that so you can see this has been casted in a vertical surface so even in a vertical surface just like applying paint you can apply the material layer on layer 1 mm at a time till it gets to about 8 to 10 mm and you'll have a good strong casting like this another product that can be added to this is the AC730 retarder. So a lot of times over here in India, it's quite hot. So we suggest using the AC730 retarder when you feel like it's a hot day or when you feel like you need some time to complete your job. You can add this about five grams to a kilo anywhere from five grams to eight grams the more you put the slower the curing time will get but you have to keep in mind that if you use the retarder 
you cannot demold after four hours it might take five hours instead but it's a very good idea to use the retarder if you're trying for the first time because in about 15 minutes or so this material can start to get a bit lumpier if it's sitting in your mug for long so i think we've covered our casting today i will see you guys tomorrow we will demold these pieces and we will use the acid edge process on both to reveal our stone finish i'm super excited for that so our castings are fully cured now you can see that they're rock solid let's begin by demolding the planter first so satisfying to peel these things off I have a bit of unmixed pigment over here. I like it. I like the look. So no air bubbles. No deformities in the casting. I think this is one of the best castings I've made. It's pretty cool. So I'll set this aside and we'll demold our bigger casting now. I'm going to now demold my bigger casting. I'm going to be a little gentle while demolding so that you do not break the casting. Are you guys ready for it? Pretty cool. Because of the uneven sh shapes, we have some deposits of the liquid, but that's totally fine for this casting because we're going to do the stone finish on it. If you want to avoid this, just make sure that you do not mix too much extra liquid and you should be fine. We can go ahead with the next step, which is the most exciting acid edge step that reveals, that gives us that stone finish. We are now ready to do our acid edge. Um, before we even pour the acid of, out of the can, it's important to wear a mask and some gloves. You need a glass of water, plain water regular and some acid. It's quite a simple process. But you need to make sure you're wearing a mask. Let's start with the planter first. What you're looking to do is to first brush some water on. Just wet the surface of your planter. And once you are done wetting the planter, you can use the acid. So you just need to brush a layer of acid on. It smells bad guys, but you get a good result in the end. So what the acid actually does is that it cuts through the smooth layer and reveals the stone textured finish. So I can already see as I'm brushing the acid on 
that my surface is becoming rougher. So how it works is that the longer the acid stays on, the more it will corrode the surface, the smooth layer, and it will become rougher and rougher. So you can feel it with your hand. I can already feel it becoming rougher. If you notice over here, you can see what you do not want to be doing is leaving deposits of acid on your casting. And start by putting some water on this again. And we'll brush acid. So what we do not want happening is these, these pools of acids, acid on our casting. So I'm just going to do this to it. I'm going to really quickly pour this back in. You do not want to leave any excess acid anywhere. Otherwise, you will have pits. And you will have a deeper stone finish in one area and a lighter stone finish in the other. Once you feel like you have got your desired finish, the stone finish, the roughness, you can use water to neutralize it and to clean all the soot from the top of it. And this will stop the acid from cutting in more, cutting any more material. It feels amazing in my hands. It might be a bit messy. You can also just take this under a running tap and now wash it. Going to do the same over here. Beautiful finish. Already I can feel it. Just neutralizing it water so that it stops cutting. And in bigger pieces like this, or even bigger ones than this. What, you, what would be a good idea is to look at the casting with a light or wash it and then come back to it again so that if you have some spots, like I can already see that this area has had a little less of acid on it and it has the stone finish is not as good as the other. So I can just come back to it and do it again. Once it dries, you'll see the actual finish. I'm just going to use this sponge to give our casting a quick, to dry it, to show you all on camera. Otherwise, I would be doing this under a running tap. But to show you guys on camera of how amazing the stone finish looks. And as you can see over here, as I wash, as I wipe this, I can see some places I could do with a bit more of stone finish. So I would then come back to it and do it again. So I think here you can see the stone finish coming through. And the more you wash it, the better it starts to look. This isn't washed enough. And then obviously after it washes and then it dries, you can come back and hit it with some more acid if required. Off camera, I've just given this a wash under the tap, running water. And it's wet right now, but you can see the, the way the aggregate has come out. If you remember when we had demolded, this was like almost white in color but now you can see the amazing aggregate inside it
just to tell you guys how powerful this material is this piece can now be used as a bathroom tile it can be used as cladding for your ex on your exterior facade it can be used as a big planter as furniture there's no limit to it also it can be used in less thicknesses of 10 to 12 mm 8 mm so that just makes it really lightweight so this is why i feel like it's a dream material for creators like us so this is it for today guys the only step remaining with this now is to seal it you can use penetrating or flexigard sealer to seal this it is available on our website they work really well and you will see that once sealed it will not stain it will not absorb water right now this is obviously ab absorbing water because it hasn't been sealed but once sealed this will not absorb water or this will not stain let us know what queries or what questions you all have about ac730 we haven't spoken too much in depth about the material yet so drop in your questions let us answer them in the next video also let us know what you would like to see in our next video i can't wait to be back this is it from us today hope to see you soon in the next video goodbye